All right, so we have created the master rod assembly and the articulate rod assembly. Now we're going to put those together with the link pins and put together the final radial engine. So to do that, we're going to click the same button as usual, the existing components, click the product tree. Um, I'm going to start by putting in the link pins. I have four of them. Copy. Once you have all four, um, go ahead. Same button we've been clicking. Not new there. Not sure why Katia. Click on the two cat products that represent it. In my case, I saved them as Articulate and Master. Click on them. Click open. There they are. They're all in here exactly as they were. Um, if your coincidence are seen, mine are not. Your constraints and stuff, you can click hide show. There they are. Hide them because they're not so important for this assembly. They're important in the assembly they were put together in. Okay, this time we're going to go ahead and rename them. So product 2 is going to become the master rod. Right click, properties, underneath product. Articulate dot one. That way, copy, paste, and see how it now becomes point two, point, point three. Move them out of the way so we can see it all. So we're going to start with um, link pin 1 and articulate rod 1. Do the constraints there. The way these are constrained is kind of interesting. Um, this is mostly going to be a bunch more coincidence constraints, but we're going to start by fixing the master rod. Again, it's going to be the fixed element. We're going to build everything off of it. So and these are the holes that the link pin is going to go through, and it's also going to hold this in between these two places. So with that in mind, we're going to start by putting in the coincidence constraints. You know, we need them through this hole. Make sure it's not this hole. Doing that rod. Go ahead and do both coincidence constraints at once. I like to do constraints by type first. Um, some people can find it confusing and prefer to do all the constraints for all of the pieces before moving on to the next piece. So, okay, next we're going to do a surface constraint between the master rod and the articulate rod one. So you're going to click this bottom surface on the upper part of the um, master rod. So click that, also click the upper rod, the surface there, click your surface constraint. And then lastly we're going to do a surface constraint between the top part of this rod and the link pin. But we're going to do the bottom part of the link pin. Cool. Hit update, fit all in. That doesn't look like what we want. No, but that's okay, because next we're... Go ahead and rotate this out. We're going to do an angle, but we're going to do the angles between um, the axis here. So there's the axis, there's our axis. This may give us a weird angle because I moved it weirdly. Let's see what it does when I update. Ah, it does that. Which is pretty good. This first angle is going to be um, 75 degrees. Not like. We'll go negative 75 for the time being. We may end up deleting and redoing these because it can be very finicky. Okay, so there's one of them. Now you're going to do the same thing for the other ones. Kind of, sort of, but not really worrying about these angle constraints because I think what we're going to do is just delete them and do it all over again. So, same deal with the rest of these. Put them all together and then we'll do the angles. 
Okay, so I didn't want to show you guys me putting together everything else, but um, now you can see we've got everything, all the rods done. What I did was I just applied angle constraints and then deleted them to kind of adjust it a little bit. It's fudging, it's not exactly right, I know, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it from the top down so we can kind of line up our axis a bit, little bit better. Um, as you can see on this one, maybe I should just that 90 degree angle there. But for the time being, we won't worry about it. So we're going to start by doing the angular constraints. We want the angular constraints to go through these axes, like I showed you earlier. This one's 45 degree. The first one is actually going to be a 75 degree constraint. Um, it's going to be two 75s and the rest are going to be 70 degrees. So the first one's going to be 75. Go ahead and pull it around so it's in between there. Looks a little bit better that way. We'll update. Update between every single one of them for this one. The next one's also going to be 75. Angle constraint. One. This is one of the few times I'm not going to reference back to the master rod for these angles because they are kind of relevant based on each other. This one's already 75 degrees. Just leave it. The next one's going to be 70 degrees. Again, pull it around so it looks a little bit better. The next one's also going to be 70 degrees. That's right, should hit update first. Okay, and you don't have to put in the last one, it's going to be 70 degrees, but let's go ahead and verify um, by putting it in. If you were to do this in part design, it would over constrain it. In this case, it doesn't, but you can make it a reference, and I'll show you how to do that really quick. Click OK. It doesn't really show it being over constrained. But what we can do is just double click on it, click reference. That doesn't actually affect it. And this is our radial engine finally completed. Lastly, click constraints, hide, hide show. And there you go. A radial engine in Katia. Thanks very much for following along.